As always, thanks goes to Laura for herding cats and hitting the button. Welcome everyone to Tuesday, November 14th. It is the year 2023, in case you have forgotten. It is eight o'clock in the morning and you are in the right place. This is Public Health and Safety Committee meeting. Uh, our first item is call the meeting to order, which we just did. Number two is roll call, and I see Councilmember Jefferson's face, Councilmember Agabi's face, and I'm talking, so I'm also here. Item number three is approval of the minutes for the Public Health and Safety Committee meeting from October 10, 2023. Angela or Peter, did you have any edits? If not, I would entertain a motion. No edits, so move. No edits. Move uh, to accept. Peter, is that a second? Yes. Thank you. A motion from Angela to approve the meeting minutes from October 10, 2023. A second from Peter Agabi. Any discussion? Seeing no facial expressions. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you so much. Moving on to item number four, agreement with the Confederated Tribes of the Chehalis Reservation for Fire Protection and Emergency Services. And I see Chief Hurley and Chief Crimmins. What are we talking about today? What do you need from us? Well, I have just a, a brief presentation to go over uh, an agreement. So let me try to share here. Let's see here. Beautiful. Okay, there we go. Um, so just a, a bit of background here. Um, we've uh, we've been working on an agreement for a while now with the uh, Chehalis uh, tribe uh, to provide services to what they refer to as their exit 99 reservation properties. And I don't have the exact borders outlined here, but you can see to the left of this, there are kind of two blocks there. Um, and I believe the bottom one has two parcels and that includes the Flying uh, J truck stop and also a wellness center that they're uh, building there. Uh, and up above are three properties and uh, one of those includes a business, uh, their Thunder Cannabis business there. So these are the properties uh, for this agreement that we're, we're talking about providing fire and emergency medical services or emergency services for. And really this started in 2022. Um, certainly the city recognizes a, a responsibility to provide fire and emergency services within the city limits. Uh, and in, in uh, discussions with the tribe, we certainly recognize there's a, a common interest in, <clears throat> into a voluntary agreement to, to provide those services and, and be compensated for those services. And I apologize, I apologize for the typo here. Um, it, uh, as far as uh, the federally recognized tribe, uh, those properties are, are tax exempt. So again, apologies for the typo there. Uh, this is uh, the way it's set up. There's an initial two-year agreement. The amount agreed upon uh, the tribe will pay the city is $32,500 per year. And then beginning in the third year of the agreement, there would be a, a CPI escalator uh, applied to that. And just for kind of just for perspective, in 2023, we responded to 33 calls for service. Uh, at those properties, primarily the truck stop. Uh, and so far in 2020, I'm sorry, that was 2022. So far in 2023, we've responded, the numbers are confusing, 22 calls for, uh, for service. And with regards to policy support, uh, certainly uh, a strategic priority for the city is to provide and sustain quality public ser safety services uh, and one that I uh, neglected to, to include in the staff report certainly is to build a community recognized for quality, compassion, and humanity with that, that uh, goal being to build tribal relations. And uh, so this, is, this helps towards that end as well. Uh, the action requested is that uh, the agreement be recommended uh, with the tribe to uh, council for, full appro for approval at the next full council meeting. And thank you, let me stop sharing. Thank you, Chief. Angela yeah. and Peter, did you have any questions regarding um, this agreement? No, I don't have any. I do. Uh, Chief, how did you come up with that 
32,000 number? Yeah, good good question. Uh, we uh, initially approached this, uh, our proposal on the, the uh, basically a cost per call basis. How much does it cost the Tumwater Fire Department to to run a call uh, in that uh, it taking our, our operating budget and dividing it by uh, the number of calls that we run in a year, which is a little over 6,000 right now. So we took that number and had some data on how many calls we were running there and looked at what that, that amount would be. Um, and then certainly, that, and that initial amount was probably somewhere closer to $50,000. But certainly this is a negotiation and, uh, the, you know, the, the the tribe had a perspective on uh, what they thought they should be paying. And in the end, we we were able to come kind of meet in the middle on that uh, on that dollar amount. And then in two years, when it's renegotiation time, you're just going to uh, uh, will need to adjust those numbers if we should. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And the, the contract, unless we opt out, the contract will renew. But in that third year, uh, we'll have us. We've agreed on a CPI index just to apply to the amount. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Angela. Your questions, um, Chief. So, could you put in perspective? Is this like a standard calculation we will use moving forward? Right. The other example that comes to mind is Squaxin property and identifying a rate for that at their is it their cannabis store. Is it a basic calculation or are the types of calls weighed in as well? Uh, the, in this case, we didn't weigh in the types of calls. Uh, again, we were just looking at an operating cost approach. And, you know, I would say there's no standard way to do this. We certainly looked at, to some degree, uh, you know, Lacey Fire District 3 has a, a contract with an Esqually tribe. And, and they used a similar approach in how they approached that. Um, <laughs> But certainly there are other agreements that out there that have taken a different approach, but certainly somehow try to tie that operating cost to the call volume in doing that. Perfect. Does anyone feel comfortable uh, moving to recommend the agreement with the Confederated Tribes of the Chehalis Reservation for Fire Protection and Emergency Services to full council for approval at the next council meeting? Affirmative. I move that we send the agreement to the full council for approval. Second. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Peter. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. There you go, Chief. Thank you very much. Uh, we're, we're excited about our continuing this relationship with the tribe and continuing to work with them. I dig it. Moving on to item number five, the Intergovernmental EMS Contract Advanced Life Support Funding Amendment number one. Chief Crimmins, what do you have for us today? Good morning, council members. Uh, I'm going to try to share my screen as well. So let me know if that works. Does everybody see that? Yes, golden. Perfect. Uh, so what we're talking about is an amendment to the current contract for advanced life support and kind of how we run things. So hopefully that changed, the slide changed for you guys, I hope. Uh, so what are we talking about? So back in uh, January, we actually, the city and Thurston County Medic One did sign a contract for advanced life support coverage. So that's, uh, when we talk ALS coverage, that's paramedics. And we run dual paramedics on our medic units here in Thurston County. In that contract, uh, it stipulates that any modification to the contract must be in writing and signed by both parties. And at this time, we do have an, uh, an amendment that we would like to uh, change in the contract. So that's what we're talking about today. So going to a little bit about what it is. So as I kind of talked about, we the standard of care for our ALS units in Thurston County is two paramedics. And here for Tumwater, we have Medic 5, which is two paramedics here in the city of Tumwater. And we actually have a medic unit down in Rochester as well that are city of Tumwater employees, uh, dual paramedics. What this amendment allows for is the staffing of a paramedic and a EMT in extreme situations. Uh, some of those extreme situations could be uh, MCI or a mass casualty incident. Uh, just as an example, 
I don't know if a, if a train happens to go off the tracks on I-5, that's that would be an MCI, and that would allow for a medic EMT. Other situations, uh, we were we saw this in the pandemic, or if we happen to have another pandemic someday, uh, extreme call volumes, uh, any natural disaster, it would allow us to staff that medic unit as a medic and EMT and not be out of contract. Uh, and then any other unforeseeable circumstance that we try to come up with all sorts of possibilities, but it's it's impossible. So with this though, this staffing configuration is for a very limited time frame. Once again, our standard of care is two paramedics. This is just in these rare circumstances where we we just don't have the capability to get in more paramedics. So we'd staff with a medic EMT. Uh, so with this, we're just recommending the amendment go to the council for full for full approval. And I'll take any questions if you guys have any. Thanks, Chief. Angela, Peter, do you have any questions for Chief Crimmins? Yes, I yes, do, Chief. So, yes, okay, we'll so, start with um, Angela and then we'll go with Peter. Yes, Chief. With, with our response times increasing, um, is do you believe in the future that this can be modified again to make it permanent? As we know with, you know, the budget and RFA that we had, um, how is that looking? Yeah, with, uh, you know, the response times that we tend to see, it's more basic life support call volume, more than ALS on a given year that tend to go up uh, more rapidly. Uh, with that being said, the county is looking at, uh, response times and call volumes and you know and I know I know you sit on the EMS council uh we are they are looking at adding another paramedic unit within the county that will certainly help those those call times uh so yes we the county is looking at those but our you know the the county system does run on a dual two paramedic system and certainly we would like to continue that there is a lot of benefits to doing that mm -hmm. um but yeah, we are. There's constantly evaluation on how do we adjust the responses to help deal with our ever increasing calls. Okay, so so for now, this is the way ahead. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you, Angela. Peter, go ahead. Um, Chief, what I missed was uh, what is the current staffing right now? I know we're, we're proposing two. What is the current staffing right now? I did miss that. Yeah, our current staffing is two paramedics on on each of our paramedic units. So we have in the city of Tumwater, we have Medic 5, which has two paramedics, and then Medic 14, which we staff with two paramedics, is down in Rochester. Uh, it's not gonna, this does not change our staffing. Our this is our that's our minimum staffing. We aren't altering that at all. All this allows for is in a situation of a Let's just say a natural disaster happens and we need to staff up another medic unit or allows us to staff it with a medic EMT. But our minimum staffing is always going to be two paramedics on each paramedic unit. Okay, so if I understand this correctly, this is going to be on a limited basis in addition to what is current what we currently have. Correct. This is just in case of some surge activity. Un unforeseen events uh, that just allows us to staff that with a medic EMT, but we will still always have our dual paramedic units, correct? Thank you very much. Thank you. Good questions, Angela and Peter. The question I had is, how does this play into, I know um, Budget and Finance Committee met last week and Troy presented some amendments and one of those amendments is funding for a fire study. You know, since the regional fire authority um, did not, that measure did not pass, how does that fit in? Will that be also addressed in the study and like different scenarios and current states and future states in that fire study? Yeah, it's probably more strategic plan. I'm not sure if Chief Early, you want to answer that? Yeah, I, this, our strategic planning that we're really just entering into is going to look at all phases of our operations. And certainly Thurston County Medic One is, is a big partner for uh, us and the, you know, the, the three, three ALS contractors. So, um, you know, how that service is provided will be part of that agreement uh, as we move forward, certainly. Thank you both. 
Peter and Angela, any additional questions for Chief Crimmins? Otherwise, I would entertain a motion. No, I move that, that we are um, moving forward to full council for approval. And I second. Thank you. Uh, for the record, uh, Council Member Gabi has uh, moved to recommend the Intergovernmental EMS Contract Advance Life Support Funding Amendment Number 1 with Thurston County Medic 1 to the full council for approval at the next council meeting. I love whoever writes these. Make them longer. Um, any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Perfect. Thank you. Uh, that was pretty painless for you, too. Not too shabby, right? Not not too uncomfortable. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you both. Any additional items? I did have one thing. Um, in September, public health and safety, we had discussed, you know, we're always looking for future agenda items, right? And we had messaged Administrator Parks with a couple of items. One, you know, because we had heard from the prosecuting attorney's office with our contract. We have now heard from our public defender's office. Thank you. That was a great update. Um, I looked at, <clears throat> excuse me, the agenda schedule and I see the school resource officer update scheduled for December 12th to uh, hear what they're seeing, what they're hearing, any trends they're noting in our school district. So I've seen that. What I do not see is the code violation process update. And then that got my noggin thinking is we also haven't received uh, a timeline or update regarding the police study, right? Where there's an amendment for a fire study that's just getting underway. We have not heard about the police study. So I'm wondering, um, Administrator Parks and Chief Wicks, if you could circle back and uh, let us know when you can uh, schedule those on the agenda, if that makes sense to everybody. Uh, then Peter and Angela, did you have anything? Oh, Karen. I just wanted face. to quickly mention that we have scheduled an update from the district court for January. I did not see that on the thing. It has just been added. Look at that. All right. January. Perfect. I knew that you're Karen, you're updating all that. Lisa, nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. <laughs> I just pulled into the parking lot, so I will uh, take a shot at the two questions. Um, in terms of the code enforcement, we are still working internally um, on, you know, uh, what the process looks like currently, how it was intended to look, um, and what might be, um, uh, where do we need to make some uh, process improvements, perhaps. So um, that is still pending. Um, I would hope to be able to come to you after the first part of the year. Um, and uh, the police study, so the master plan is just in process. I believe Chief Wicks could answer this better than I, but I believe they've finished their focus groups group work. And um, you know, at some point in time, I believe they'll uh, be able to come to the committee, but I, I'm sure that will be after the first of the year. Thank you, Lisa. I see uh, Laura and Chief Wicks on the screen now. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's correct. What Administrator Parks just outlined, you know, this will, we started the focus groups this month, uh, finished them up. Now we're processing all the data. Uh, we have a lot of work left to do, uh, but we plan to come back to the committee sometime in uh, the first quarter, probably the end of the first quarter, uh, once we get uh, everything um, finished along the way, or if there's a point in there in the process where we need to come back to the uh, committee before that will come, we'll schedule before then. But right now we're really early in the process. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Administrator Parks and um, <clears throat> our fabulous city attorney, Karen. The one thing I'm, I'm thinking about is timing, right? We're always, it's always a puzzle piece we're putting together. If council's having a retreat where we're identifying strategic goals and priorities in January, how does that help us be better informed if we don't have the study or any information from police? So that's what I'm thinking, right? is if we're identifying our new strategic goals and priorities, how can we be better informed with some elements of that police study, right? So that's what I was thinking. Lisa, go ahead. Yeah, the the um, the council retreat is anticipated to be a two-step process. And the, the process in January is more of a, a team building kind of exercise. So the strategic priorities conversation is actually gonna happen more towards the end of February. Um, so I would hope that there would be at least some preliminary data um, um, from maybe even from the fire study uh, to be able to help inform 
uh, going forward, um, what those uh, priorities will be for the council with regard to public safety. Perfect, thank you for that update. Um, I love that this is an item on our agenda so we can have these discussions and know that it is a delicate dance and that it will all fall into place. So thank you, Lisa, for that update <laughs> and everyone. Peter and Angela, do you have any burning questions? Um, no, not burning, but I wanted to <laughs> to to discuss further our youth coalition or an update on that. You know how so we spoke about that maybe last quarter. Somewhat hopes and our new superintendent, what the priorities are. So I'd like to circle back and have that conversation, hopefully within this next quarter. Great points, great edit. So I saw I hear youth count, uh, youth coalition, Tom Water hopes, and uh, superintendent. Yes, we'd, we'd like to see a youth coalition getting started. Perfect. How does Thank that you. Look like for Tom Water, right? Thank you, Angela. Peter, anything? I didn't mean to use the pun "burning" as we just heard from Bayer, but anything that is smoldering for you that you'd like to talk about? So. So at the beginning of uh, the year, or maybe, uh, yeah, at the beginning of the year, we had the uh, extension for the school resource officer. And during, uh, I believe, uh, two of our sessions to get that uh, move to full council, I had made a request based upon the topic that was represented at the time. Uh, disciplinary disciplinary uh, data for Toronto Public Schools. And for some reason, we just kind of went back and forth, back and forth, but that was never prevented, was never presented. And I'm taking that to mean that, that because we had other issues that took precedent at that point in time, I'd like to revisit that issue. Um, and you're talking knew, about, Peter, dis disciplinary data with school resource officers in Tom Water School Districts. Yes. Okay. It is my opinion that if you know where we're coming from, we sure would know how we will get there and what we want to achieve. In the absence of that data, all of our decisions or aspirations cannot be achieved. I would like to see that data so that we can have an informed decision or discussion about what has taken place and what we hope to see in our school district. Thank you, Peter. Chief Wicks, does that make sense regarding, I see that SRO update is on for December 12th for like any measurables or any data to be presented if available. And if not, like what the what that discussion could look like. We can certainly ask the school district, um, but that's that we don't, we don't actively get involved in the school district discipline process. So we can make that request to the school district. I don't know uh, if, if, uh, what they want to do with that. So, but we will make that request. Perfect. Thank you. Peter, is that sufficient right now? And then Chief, uh, Chief Wicks can circle back regarding the data request. That will be. The okay. ultimate goal is to be able to see that data. I know that when we last time had the interim superintendent and other staff, it was conflicting with a lot of their other meetings. So I don't see them uh, attending, but if Chief Wicks, you could ask for any data regarding school resource officers and disciplinary actions, removing, you know, all the HIPAA information. Um, I think that would help with our discussion of what our SROs are seeing, if that makes sense. And we'll ask, we'll see what they say. Perfect. Thank you. Um, good start. Anything else, Angela or Peter? No, no, have anything. Anything else from any of the other squares on this meeting right now? Seeing no one's face reappear. Great meeting. Uh, you're welcome for this gifted time. Meeting ended at 824. Thank you all so much. Thank you.